Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's Javier. I want to say thank you for being here this morning. I'm very excited to share with you some important news as it relates to the state of the opportunity here at Power and most importantly, what it means to our team. One of the things that everybody will agree with is that there's change, uh, changes in the air. And for me, that's a good thing if you understand what that change means and most importantly, <clears throat> how to leverage it to monetize the opportunity. I think that if you don't do the right thing right now, if you're not up to speed with all that's going on, one of the challenges is that you might get left behind. You know, there's a lot of people running around confused going on, like, you know, the sky is falling, when in reality, it's just an adjustment. It's just part of the cycle of business and life that has always gone on and will continue to be so for various reasons. And so I just want to say thank you again for everybody for being here. Uh, we do have a special class for you today or just training session that Mr. Red Stafford is going to be conducting on what I believe to be one of the most important elements of what we are doing here today at Power, which is how to go ahead and make sure that you are leveraging the power of a discovery call. Now, before I bring him on, I do want to just make a few announcements, if you would. And let me just start by bringing this up real quick so you can see what it is I am talking about. So let me just back up a little bit here, please, if you don't mind, and give you an idea of what I'm referring to. So let me just bring this up real quick. We do have on, here, let me just make, bring up the image so you can see it. We do have the Mentor Factory. You know, I do encourage people to come to the, uh, or attend the Mentor Factory for no other reason that you're going to hear from a lot of different people that are making things happen within their lives and their uh, you know power of business, if you would. Uh, they've asked me to come and train. One of the things that I did, I think, that were right when I first joined Power, about a month after I joined, they had, back in November, uh, not last year, the year before, they had a Metro factory. And I went to it, and I was able to listen to a lot of different people condensed, if you would, to one single event. Now, I was told there's only three seats left. I don't know if that's the case or if there's any seats left by now, but maybe... Uh, just maybe you went ahead already and registered for it. I hope you did. If not, and if it's sold out, you know, there'll be another one, I'm sure, at a later time of the year or, or next year, whatever the case might be. But it's definitely an investment that, in my opinion, is very well worth it for the simple fact that it allows you to, again, encapsulate the knowledge and experience of a lot of different people in one single uh, event. And that's a very efficient way to run your business. The last thing I want to show you before we get started is this right here. You're going to see it here. Just one second, pop up on the screen. And this is Mr. Let me see if it pops up here. It's just, I don't know why it's taking a little while. Here, there it is. And so I want to go ahead and take a moment. Uh, and if you can't see it, give me a second and I'll bring it up right now. So you can kind of see my screen. And what I want to do is show you just a simple post from Facebook. And what this here shows you, this is Mr. Doyle Nazareno. He's a realtor, uh, somebody I recruited last year. And when he came on board, I put him test drive, I put him through everything that I've shown you a million times how to do. And I'm very excited to report that he just finished, or we just installed his solar system at his home. And it took a little while, but he we made it under the net metering 2.0 and everything else that was promised. Last week, I did some training in the city of Downey via webinar on how to recruit realtors. And in my opinion, if you're not well-versed in how to recruit realtors, do that because that can serve as, in my opinion, the shortcut between you getting a steady stream of qualified. Qualified doesn't mean they're qualified for solar. That means that they're qualified, that they've been scrubbed to as much as a degree as they can, including that they are obviously homeowners, including the fact that they have decent credit because the home, uh, the realtors know them. I would strongly encourage you to focus on recruiting realtors as a uh, as a way of generating steady and not doing a steady stream of referrals. Now, I don't care. I pay my realtors 50-50. I don't do the whole ambassador thing because if a, a thousand bucks is good, uh, 3,500 in general is much better. And when they see that, they, they want to join on their own. And so again, just my personal recommendation for you to consider doing that because it is something that's going to help you see yourself. Now, I think we're going to be some challenging times between now and until power or vision or you know or whatever gets the whole leasing proposal simplified, if you would. And they say that they're going to do that by October. It, trying to figure out this whole lease thing for me is like, might as well read a book. It's written in Greek. I mean, it is something else. But they're going to simplify it. It's coming. So hang in there because some are hanging in there. Some are not. 
but I want to make sure that you don't go anywhere. Uh, I want to say a happy anniversary. Uh, as a matter of fact, to Mr. Barry, I posted that not too long ago, Mr. Barry. So congratulations on that. And without any further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring up Mr. Red Stafford, who's going to be sharing with you, you know, how to conduct a solar discovery phone call. Let me tell you something. Nothing is more frustrating to everybody as a recruiter, as a producer. And for me, I work a lot with realtors. I have gone from, I usually get around two to three leads from different realtors a day. And I used to qualify about eight out of every 10 <clears throat> referrals they would send me would qualify for, to go solar zero down. Right now, that number on average is about one to two for every 10 that come in. And I am losing some of my referring uh, referring realtors because they're getting frustrated. They're like, what's going on? What happened? This was like the last one we did. And I'm like, listen, higher interest rates, let me earn 3.0 and so on. It, it, the landscape has changed. The other uh, sense of frustration I'm getting from the field is that, hey, you know what? I'm quitting. Well, why are you quitting? Because nobody qualifies for it anymore. And I'm putting so much time and effort. And I'm going the distance. And, and I always tell them, did you do a discovery phone call? Because if you do a discovery phone call, you'll catch the good, the bad, and the ugly. Early on, what stings so much, what very often stings is how much time we put into something that ended up being nothing. Does that make sense? That's what hurts. And so the way you solve that is you have to scrub your prospects like never before. And so that's what Red's going to teach you today. And know that going forward, now you might be some kind of Superman or Superwoman that you're closing 10 out of 10 and blah, 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 blah. Listen to me. That's fine. I'm a mere mortal. Most of you here, I suspect, are mere mortals. We have egos. We don't like to crush them. We have dreams. We don't like to see them postponed. And I'm sitting here like, man, one to two out of every 10. And that's, but I'd rather get the nose up front immediately. It's just not going to work out versus we do this and we do that and we're bothering our mentors. And that's just my recommendation. So what I'm going to do is bring on Mr. Red Stafford who's going to teach you why it's so important and what to ask. So I hope you have your pen handy. I hope you're ready to take some good notes. We are recording this. I'm going to go ahead and put this <clears throat> in our back office on our YouTube channel. Remember, solar on YouTube.com is where you go. Make sure you subscribe to our channel like the videos and so on. So you'll get notified when we upload them. A lot of people text me and email me, hey, can you send me the link to this video? Can you send me the link to that? I ignore those to get all together because if you register or subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube will send it to you. And if you don't subscribe, which is fine, at least just remember solar on YouTube.us. Solar on, was it dot .us or .com? I'm not sure. I don't go there too often. Um, but whatever, I'll put it into the chat right now and give it to you, just subscribe one time. That's why I don't know, because I, here, let me just go in here and, and figure this out. It is solar on youtube.com. Let me see if it takes me there. And let me just go ahead and share that with you in case you could not see that. Um, I'm gonna go to solar on youtube.com and it brought me here. All of our videos are here. You can go by playlist, selling post 3.0, Lease or buy, realtors, everything is here. Solar on YouTube.com. It's up to you to uh, subscribe to it. I don't return text messages or email addresses asking for the link to this video or that video. Just go there one time and let's just focus on what matters the most as well. All right. So, uh, so what we're going to do, 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 what do you mean by, uh, by not qualifying? I think you only want to do I don't refer to realtors. Uh, qualify for so I don't understand the question. How could only one to two out of ten refer my realtors? Well, it's just that that the uh, the issue a lot of the times can be with how much they're paying, who their utility company is. There's a lot of different factors, but the point of it is is that um, if you look at anything production across the board, it's definitely down. And the two major culprits, without a doubt, number one revolves around net metering 3.0, and number two the higher rates, and of course the dealer fees that go along with that. Don't help either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Mr. Rich Stafford and not more take more of his time. If you have any questions, just go ahead and mute yourself, ask away. And without any further ado, Rhett, it's all yours, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Javier. Good morning, everybody. All right. So what we're finding is, and this is not uh, just Javier and I, but the company in general is, um, we're 
we're slow to adopt into this new reality that we have uh, uh, been dragged into, either uh, because of NIM 3.0 or just with the uh, the market in general. Um, you know, eight months ago, nine months ago, um, we were still talking to people and telling them this was a you know this was an IQ test, changing from from the dirty electrical grid to clean solar was an IQ test. You know, you're spending $250 a month. Now you're going to be spending, you know, $220 a month or $200 a month or whatever the case may be. And you're going to have solar and you're going to be good. Every, every, you know, there's going to be peace in the world and all those types of things. And then when the Fed started raising the rates, um, as you all know, um, financing and, and back then, by the way, um, leasing was from the devil. And, uh, you know, nobody wanted to do them. And the main reason was because it was almost as cheap to purchase uh, when you included the tax write-off as it was to lease or do a PPA. That has now all changed. It is dramatically less money per month on a lease than trying to finance a purchase through Good Leap, Sunlight, or Mosaic, or whoever else we're using now, right? Um, if you can get a credit union loan, um, the dealer fees are almost non-existent, but the problem with most credit union loans are short-term. You typically cannot get a 25-year uh, term on a uh, with a credit union. So a lot of what we've been pushing meaning the company, what we've been pushing now is leasing. And the industry in general, quite frankly, I think should probably be at about um, a 90% and ninety percent lease, 10% purchase. Um, Jonathan Budd is, is wanting everybody to get to at least a 75, 25. Uh, but the way I look at it, when I'm looking at proposals, um, unless the homeowner is self-employed and has a honest streak running up their back, then they're going to tell the IRS um, how to or how much money they actually make and, and actually write those checks. Um, I'm, I'm only proposing leasing because the problem with employed people or self-employed people who write everything off is they don't really see the benefit of that tax credit. Even if they're going to get it, oftentimes they're going to have to spread that tax credit out over a few years. They're not going to pay, take it and put it towards their monthly pay, their uh, loan, keeping their monthly payment down. So at the end of the day, the moment before you're trying to get them to sign, they that tax credit goes out the window because they figure that, well, we're just going to spend that anyway. And all they focus on is the monthly payment. And they're looking at, okay, I'm spending $220 a month now. I'm going to be spending $250 a month uh, or maybe more, $280, $290, $300 a month at, at, nine, at month 19. You know, th this is going to be a tough sell, okay? Um, because their logic wins out versus emotional um, because they're not, looking at you know it's emotional when you're trying to save them money when you're trying to cost them money logic rules and and so it's um it's just a much tougher sale whereas with the lease you're going in they're spending 220 250 you're going in at 175 180 uh, maybe 200 210 but at 200 210 to or, or a bill swap um you're actually giving them a couple batteries so you can when you're giving the batteries um, at the same price and doing a bill swap, or maybe even a little bit more, you can still make that emotional if you've asked the right questions in your pre-discovery call. Uh, Dwayne's asking, what's a bill swap? Meaning you're spending $250 a month now, you're still going to be spending $250 a month, but now you're going to have solar with backup uh, power to last you for a couple of days if necessary. Okay, so when we say bill swap, we're just saying, um, you know, it's it's you're not we're, we're not saving you on a monthly basis. You know, again, eight months ago we were always saving people 
um, a lot of money going from uh, you know, the electrical grid to solar because of the low rates and the low dealer fees. Um, oftentimes now, especially in California with the new NEM 3.0, it's no longer going to be slashing. You know, remember how Javier was always talking about the key word is slashing their monthly bill. We don't say that anymore. Okay. What we're hoping to do is just give them a bill swap, but put them in a better position as far as with the, the environment and making sure that they never have to worry about the electrical grid going down. It's going to, even if you've been in an area that you've never seen grid issues before, if you're part of Southern California or, or any part of California, actually, it's so old, it is going to have more, start having more and more problems um, Okay, Dwayne, we're not talking about phone service. Um, and we're going to have, they're going to, the grid is going to have more and more problems um, because of, partly because of us, meaning solar professionals, because the more people that go solar, the more, the more problems the grid will have. And the reason is, um, uh, how about we turn Dwayne's chat off for a while? Uh, the reason is the, um, uh, the um, yeah, you're, you're really distracting me, Dwayne. I'm not sure what you're doing, but uh, please. Um, the reason is that you've got all these people on solar during the day and the utility companies during the day, they have to buy that energy. They don't have a choice. They're required by law to buy the energy that is being produced through the um, net metering uh, contracts, okay? If they're buying the energy, they don't want to be producing the energy. So they turn off the, uh, they turn off the um, um, nuclear, they turn off the, the gas and oil, they turn off all of these things because they've got plenty of power during the day. They have their own solar farms. They don't need all this energy that they have to buy from us. And then when the sun goes down, all of a sudden you've got all these people. And now since NEM 3.0, and since this big push this year, getting everybody into solar, even more now people um, going from producing energy to requiring energy. And it happens so fast and they do not have the ability to store enough energy to make that transition. So that 45 minute to an hour transition from producing energy to using energy is a very dangerous time for the, the grid because it takes time to get things um, ramped back up. Oil is quickest, then gas, and then nuclear. But the oil still takes about 30 minutes. Gas is about an hour and nuclear could take a couple of hours to get it back up to full speed to where it can handle everything. So when you've got all these people all of a sudden going from pushing to drawing that energy, that creates a lot of problems. And we're gonna see more and more issues with that um, at, in the coming uh, months and years. And so when this starts happening, then people are really gonna realize, hey, I need to have batteries, but right now we're on the we're just on the the beginning part of this. So they still don't really. Oftentimes they don't even realize. You know, they say, "Well, I haven't had a um, I haven't had a um, uh, power outage, uh, you know, in five years or three years, or I had one and it lasted for thirty minutes." Well, it's going to get worse, um, and it will get that makes that will actually make it easier for us to sell batteries. But in the meantime. Um, the idea is that um, if it's Southern California Edison, pg and &E and sdg &E, we don't have a choice. We're going to have to sell batteries or it truly doesn't make sense uh, in most cases to try and sell solar in those three utilities. Um, if you're trying to do it without a battery, um, you're looking at a 50 to 60 percent offset, which means they're still going to have a pretty big um, electrical bill. Now, because we are selling batteries now, um, it's important that we ask more questions. 
you know, in the past, when this was more of a um, an IQ test in selling solar, um, quite frankly, all we did was, you know, the mentee tier one, you collect a, a utility bill, you send it in, you put it into the system, you create the lead, you attach the mentor, you set up the appointment. Um, because it really wasn't, once you designed the system, it was pretty simple and almost um, almost never had to make any any changes to the design once you were in the, the presentation. Uh, if you don't ask the right questions now, because of batteries and because of different things that are, are we have to calculate in, um, it's going to be much more difficult. And here's why. It's, a, it's exactly what Javier was saying earlier. As of right now, we cannot create a lease with Sonova in Vision or Solo. Um, we have to create the proposal in Vision or Solo. Once the proposal is created, we then take all of that information and we have to start over in Sonova. We create a whole file in Sonova. Um, and then once we have it in Sonova, we have to create our scenarios. Now the scenario may have, for instance, typically I'll do a scenario with a 2.9% escalator. I'll also do a scenario with a 0% escalator. Some people want a, a level payment and they don't ever wanna to have to think about it. And um, some people want the lowest payment possible. So it kind of depends on what the, the homeowner's looking for. I will tell you, I'm having a lot more success right now in level payment, zero escalators, because to be able to tell somebody that I'm locking your payment in for 25 years, so, I mean, we can't even do that technically with the purchase, right? Because you only can do that technically if uh, they're putting in their tax credit. But with the lease, we can do that. Um, and with the PPA, by the way. PPAs, um, the only reason we're not talking much about PPAs right now is, is uh, you can't add a battery right now. Uh, we're hoping to be able to do that soon. But uh, as of right now, um, you cannot add a battery to a PPA. All right, so I said all of that to express how important it is that you make a pre-discovery call. Now, um, what we what we want to try and teach you to do is to be able to do this on your own. However, if you are in training, if you are a, a tier one um, and you need help, um, I have no problem, Javier has no problem on being on that pre-discovery call with you. We can ask the questions if you don't feel comfortable. Um, I would suggest, uh, I'm gonna put the, um, I have Javier put the uh, PDF into, um, uh, into the chat so you can download the uh, pre-discovery questions that I'm gonna go over with you right now. Um, and I would suggest possibly getting with somebody um, and even if you're taping yourself and just do some uh, role playing. Um, they're really simple questions, and you're you're not looking to remember. You're not trying to close them. You're just trying to get information. People will give you all the information you need for us to close them within just a few minutes if you're asking the right questions. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Sorry. All right, everybody see my screen? Can you see it? Okay, thanks. All right. Okay, so when we collect the bill, so here's something that uh, and Javier and I uh, compare notes on this every once in a while. You would be surprised how often we get a bill from somebody that they've, they've uploaded it into the platform or when we're doing our test drives, they email it to us and it's page one of six. Okay, or it's one month's bill from PGE, which doesn't really tell us anything. Okay, 
it's important that when you get the bill, you look at that bill and just understand that we need a few things. And here are some of the things that we're looking for. First of all, does it show 12 month usage history? Southern California Edison shows 12 month usage history, or it, it has a graph for a 12 month usage history. Sometimes it may only show two or three months. Um, if you get one that only shows two or three months, um, confirm with the homeowner how long they've lived there. If they've lived there for more than a year, it just means you need another bill. Oftentimes for whatever reason, Southern California Edison, every once in a while, um, some of the, the months fall off the graph, but you can just go back a few months and um, you can typically uh, come up with uh, a full 12 months. If it's PG&E, it will only show um, this month's usage. It will have a graph on it. And if you're not careful, you'll think that's a 12 month graph when in fact, it's, it's just a usage graph for the month. Okay. Um, PG&E is really simple to get. Uh, the homeowner just has to either go online and uh, pull it, or they can actually make a phone call, or you can make the phone call if they don't mind. They have to give you the phone number that the account is tied to in the last four uh, of their social, and then you can actually get the information for you. If you if they don't want to do that, then they need to make the phone call. And PG&E, it's like all computerized. It will give them four months at a time, all the way back as long as they want to go. Okay, but we have to have a 12 month usage history for us to be able to give an accurate estimate. Okay, next thing we want to know is, is the bill for the correct property? So check the service address and make sure that's the home that you're looking to do the solar on. Next is, is the bill under the homeowner's name? If it's not, who's the account holder? Uh, holder? Ask them, is it a spouse? Is it uh, somebody else who lives in the house? Um, or possibly, is this a non-owner occupied property? Okay. We need to know that up front. If there are some months that are, are very low or very high, meaning it doesn't look like usual usage, because most people have a pretty similar usage uh, on a month-to-month -month basis, except for the fact of, of weather. So you're always going to see um, a rise during the summer months and um, uh, possibly in the winter months, uh, but uh, spring and, and, and fall, you're gonna have, uh, it's just gonna be, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all gonna look um, like it should. If, if you've got a lot of spikes one way or another, um, ask them about if they remember what those spikes are about. Okay, because we need to know if maybe some parts of the year they don't live in the home. Okay, maybe they, I, I had some, uh, uh, my aunt and uncle lived in Arizona, except for three months of the year, they moved to, you know, Seattle and lived with my grandmother. So um, ask them if you see, if you see something unusual on the bill. And then finally, you're going to um, calculate the cost per kilowatt hour. Um, but we can talk about that. Uh, we can talk about that later. All right, once you have the bill, here's how you would do the pre-discovery call. So when you're setting up getting the bill, you're gonna tell them, look, you know, and we have a script for getting the bill. And the last thing we want you to say when you get that bill is, okay, once I have it, I'm gonna review it and I may call you back and ask you some questions. So set that pre-discovery call up, okay? Now, if you're doing it on your own, that's the way you would do it. If not, um, if you're going to do a um, conference call, um, you'd want to set up that conference call um, ahead of time. Um, my suggestion is don't do this as a surprise. You can call them back if you're the one on the phone, if you're the only one on the phone. But if you're going to pull in the mentor, um, you really need to, to pre-warn them and pre-warn the mentor that that's what you're going to do and have a time set up for that. You know, on friends, I don't have a problem calling them. And if it's just me and we're going to have a conversation, but if I'm bringing in Javier or somebody else, I don't want to spring that on people. It makes people very uncomfortable 
and you don't want to create any issues like that up front. So I got your bill. Wanted to call and ask you a couple of questions. Um, by the way, and start it off. By the way, have you ever had a solar proposal before? We want to know this because of a, a few different things, a few different reasons. We want to get an idea of um, how much they know about solar. Um, so we want to know, you know, who did it. We want to know how long ago it was, because quite frankly, if it was more than four months ago, five months ago, um, a lot of things have changed in the last three plus four or five, six a year. A lot of things have changed. Um, and um, we want to know what were they what were they offering? Do you remember? Was it a lease or purchase? Were you paying cash? And that's something you want to find out because the one thing we haven't talked about today yet is what's the best way to buy solar? Well, cash, of course. The problem is most people <coughs> don't have the cash to just write that check um, and pay for it. Okay, But some people do. And if we don't know that going in, um, and we find out about that later, that completely changes how we would present that solar proposal. Because if they're willing to pay cash, we probably wouldn't even present it as a lease. We would only talk about cash. Now, I would have a lease ready to go, a lease payment ready to go as an option if they were to come back and say, oh, I didn't think it would cost them that much, right? So I would be prepared to do it a different way. But like I said, quite frankly, 90% um, of the time right now, I am presenting sol uh, solar leasing and solar leasing only. I never get even asked about purchasing, quite frankly, uh, most of the time. Um, so we asked them about how many panels. Um, what did they like about the proposal? What did they not like? Okay. And if it was recent, do they still have it? Let's say it was two weeks ago. Um, do they still have it? You don't need to get it, okay? I just want to know if they have it because when I go in to talk with them, I know they have it. I can ask them questions about that so that we make sure whatever I'm presenting. I don't need their proposal to be able to present to them what I think they need. I would present them what I think they need, and then we'd compare it to what the other company did and see what the differences were, okay? All right. Um, so I'm going to find out if they, um, um, what they feel would be the two most important factors that that would make them want to switch to solar. And what do I mean by that? Uh, most people are going to say, well, I'd like to save money. Okay. Now, this is important. This is called changing their base of thinking, okay? When people, typically when people say, I'm looking to save money, in the front of their head, what they're, what they're thinking is, I'm looking to save money every month, okay? So I'm gonna change it a little bit right here. And I'm gonna say, so first I'm gonna say, um, uh, what are the two most important things? Well, I'm, I'm looking to save money. Okay, well, that's that's very important, right? Saving money. And what's the what would be the next benefit you think would be the most important? And they're going to have to think about this, okay? Um, but they might say, well, I've been thinking about getting an electric vehicle, so I think it's probably important. Or, well, I, I don't want to have to worry about, you know, I don't want to have to worry about blackouts, Okay, well, that's something we need to know. And, and those are the types of types of things that may come up. Okay, so I'm just going to write that down. And now if I'm asking those questions at the end, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use um, that information in my in my trial and my test close. Okay, then I'm going to find out what's your what do you think your highest bill? I've got your electric bill. I've got your graph. I can figure this out. But I want to know what they think their highest bill is for the, in the last 12 months. Because people have a tendency um, not to remember. 
you know, they don't remember, oh, you know, we had an $800 bill in July because now it's, it's, you know, May, right? And July is a long time ago, okay? You know, in doing loans, oftentimes we would say, you know, we would say, hey, you, you had a 60 day late in December last year. What was that about? It's like, you know what? I don't remember. And literally I'd go in and say, okay, well, let me ask you if anything changed. What happened in December? Did you have a death in the family? Oh, yeah, my mother died. You would be surprised. We have a tendency to forget the bad things that we don't even associate it, okay? So we want them to think about what their highest bill was. And I want to know that because later on, I'm going to say, you know, one of the things we talked about or you talked about, uh, you know, with Judy in the pre-discovery call is your highest bill was $400 a month. I'm looking here. In July, your bill was $640. And the wife was going to say, oh, yeah, we paid $640. Why would you tell them $400? Bucks? You know, that type of thing, right? So I want to make sure um, we're, we are um, uh, bringing out those bad things so that we can um, use those in our emotional, the, the emotional part of our presentation. What's your lowest bill? Okay. Now, we're hoping to be able to do a bill swap at somewhere around the lowest bill, obviously. We're not always going to be able to do that. Um, but almost always right now, we're able to do that um, at the average. Um, I will tell you, I've done quite a few presentations since not NEM 2.0 uh, went uh, away. And utilizing the leasing aspect of our business, um, I've been able to, uh, most of the time, I've had maybe two or three out of, maybe maybe 20% um, that are, you know, still don't make much sense. Um, but those were fairly low monthly payments. What you, I will tell you what you're looking for right now is a monthly average bill north of $180, $180 a month, okay? Um, less than $180 a month, it's really, really difficult. You're going to have to um, uh, increase their payment, and it's a much harder sale. It's not an impossible sale. It's just a much harder sale. <laughs> All right. Have you made or are you expecting to make any changes over the next 12 to 18 months? And we're talking about in your electricity usage. Are you pretty pretty stable in your electricity usage, meaning you having any babies here soon, you're moving anybody else new into the home, you're thinking about an electric vehicle, that type of thing, okay? So here's our questions regarding the batteries. How many people are living in the property? Of those eight people, how many are adults? How many are children? How many people work inside the home and how many people work outside the home? What percentage of your electricity usage do you feel is being used from 5 p.m. to midnight? This is going to tell us, give us a lot more information to be able to determine how much battery storage we're going to have to include with the proposal. Okay. And the calculations are fairly simple um, to be able to calculate this. And this is something that your mentor will go over with you um, during your um, energy savings review. Next is, have you had any roof issues? How old is the roof? So if they've had a proposal before, there's a good chance a lot of companies, Sunrun and a lot of other companies, they actually do a, a site survey um, up front. They, they don't like to do presentations over Zoom or over the phone. They want to go to the people's homes and they say it's because they have to, they have to look at the roof and they look at basically do a site survey. The reason they do it is because it's easier to close when you're face to face on that first appointment. But um, oftentimes, if they've had a proposal, it was face to face. And the other company may have told them they have a roofing issue. They may have told them 
they are going to have to upgrade their electrical panel, which we'll talk about here um, next. Um, so we want to find out if they've if they've had a proposal before. Did they already look at your roof? Okay. Um, that's even more important if they have what looks like could be either clay tile or concrete clay tile, lightweight clay tile or heavyweight clay tile. Um, lightweight clay tile is a problem because that means we also have to do a roof uh, uh, proposal because we have to do a comp inlay. We do not install solar over lightweight clay tile, okay? Um, if they say they've had roof issues, we wanna find out if they've looked into replacing the roof. If they've had roof issues, I'll bet you they've looked into replacing the roof and they know approximately what it's going to cost, okay? And you wanna find out, you wanna verify what kind of roofing material they have. And if they've looked into um, replacing the roof, ask them if they've thought about going forward with that and would they be paying that cash or financing? And the reason I'm asking you, Mr. Homeowner, is because if you're looking to do, do the roof, if you think it's important, if you're actually having leaks, we can actually include it inside the solar contract, zero money out of pocket with your monthly payment. <laughs> Next, do you know how big your main electrical panel is? If they don't tell you right away, what you might want to have them do is go take a picture of it. Now we need two pictures um, and you'd be surprised. Please look at the pictures before you send them. Every once in a while, um, when I ask for a copy of the main electrical panel, I get a copy of the electric meter. It's a different thing. Um, and I'm looking for, or I get a copy of the electrical panel with the door closed, okay? Um, I need the door open when you get that picture. And not only do I need a picture of all the breakers, I need a picture of the tag that's on the inside top front cover on the door. So when you open that door on, up at the top, there's a um, sticker. I need a picture of that sticker, preferably one I can read, by the way. So it, this needs to be close enough to where I can read it but yet far away enough that I can see that whole breaker section, okay? But do two pictures. So you're asking for two pictures, not one picture, all right? Now, if they immediately say, oh, I have a 200, 200 amp, then you can rest assured it's, it's a 200 amp. But if they don't know, ask them to send you a, a picture. And then you're going to include that. You're gonna upload that picture or pictures into assets, okay? And then let me know that those are there, or Javier, no, let us know in the notes, um, in, the, uh, in the lead that you send over. Um, and you do the same thing. If you're answering the questions on this PDF, you would uh, upload this PDF to the um, assets, or you can put the questions and answers, you can just copy and paste them into the proposal notes, okay? All right, do you have an HOA? This is something we all forget to ask. If they have an HOA, we need the name of the HOA and the phone number. If you're a realtor, you don't need to ask, just go into MLS and you can figure it out. I do that all the time um, because I have, I have things that come over all the time and I'm looking at it and I know there's an HOA, but there's no information. I'll just pull it up on MLS and I can usually get the information. All right, another important question for batteries. When was the last time you experienced a power outage? Now they may tell you never, okay? Oh, that's great. But how long do you think that's gonna last for? Well, what do you mean? Well, you've heard about all the grid issues we're having, right? Yeah, so everybody's expecting power outages here in the few, in the coming months and years. What do you think? We need to get them thinking about this, okay? If the power, if they have had a power outage, a blackout or a brownout or whatever the case may be, how long was the power out? Okay. If it was longer than six hours, 
Did you lose anything in the fridge, in the freezer, those types of things? Or were you pretty careful with it? And if they say, oh, no, I didn't lose anything. You had to be really careful, right? Yeah, because yeah, you, you never know how long those outages are going out, going, going to last. And if they last for very long, you could have to, re have to replace everything in the, the refrigerator and the freezer, right? So this is all, you're, you're, you're building up to this. You're, you've got to get them thinking about this. You're, this is part of that thing where we're, we're identifying the problem. We're not creating the problem. We are identifying the problem, but making sure the homeowner is aware. They're aware back here in the back of their head. We want it front and center. And we're going to remind them about this because you're asking these questions. When I do the proposal, I'm going to see the answers. I'm going to see that you've asked these questions. And I'm going to use that in the presentation, reminding them about the answers they gave you, right? I understand when you were talking to Raphael, you had mentioned that you had a, a blackout. It lasted um, 10 hours and you wound up having to throw everything in the refrigerator out. You don't ever want to do that again, do you? Wait for answer, right? Because it it will it will help you um, uh, make it it makes it a, such a much easier transition from grid to solar when you know as much as possible and know what the homeowner's concerns are. Okay, finally, are you currently in the process of a refinance? I have one right now that's on hold because they're trying to do a refinance. They're getting the refinance first. Uh, and then they want to come back and do the solar and um, possibly even get enough extra cash out in the refinance just to pay for the solar. Um, so we're looking at uh, we're looking at that. Is your credit score higher than 650? Now, this is towards the end. And if you don't feel comfortable asking this, don't ask them. But if you've got the kind of relationship or a rapport built up, so let me ask you a question. Do you have a credit score higher than 650? <laughs> if they if they will answer you, they're, they're not going to say, I'd rather not tell you. They're not, never going to do that. They will answer you. If they tell you, oh, no, my, my FICO score is probably 580. Well, that's a problem, obviously. Okay. And we may not even want to proceed. Uh, it, it kind of depends. You're not going to tell them that. You're going to tell me what the answer is. And then I'm going to tell you how we're going to approach that. Because one of the things we still, um, I still may want to meet with them. Um, because depending upon what the situation is, we might be able to help them get their credit score over 650. Okay. Um, it just kind of depends on what it is. I mean, I've been working with credit since 1982. Um, so, I mean, um, there are a lot of things that can be done to increase a person's credit score, uh, and it may be some, you know, additional benefit that we can do for people. Um, I do not increase people's credit score um, to just be increasing people's credit score, by the way. Um, so don't ask me. Um, it's not something I do. Um, okay, great. I think I have everything I need to get your uh, energy savings report. Today's Monday. We'll have the report ready by tomorrow afternoon. I'd like to set up the follow-up Zoom meeting with both you and your spouse for Wednesday or is Thursday better? Now, you can ask this question however you want, but you need to make sure that you're saying you and your spouse. Don't say we need all the decision makers. Never say that, okay? You and your spouse or you and the other homeowner, okay? You need to find out um, if there are any other homeowners, it's probably a question I should put up there. Who's the owners of the home? Okay, because we need the we need everybody on the call. And even if they come back and they say, "I'm the one who makes all the decisions. Um, my wife works, or my husband works, or whatever the case may be," um, that is still unacceptable. Okay. We need to make sure everybody is on the call. And the way you do that, really simple, I've got that here, down here, is I understand what you're saying. However, I'm currently in training with a mentor 
and I need your help. In order to get certified, I need to participate in a certain number of presentations. Now, you don't need to tell them you need to do a certain number of sales to get certified, right? You need to participate in a certain number of presentations, and I only get credit for those presentations when all parties are in the meeting. So can you help me out on this? If, if they're not going to be available Wednesday at 4, when's a better time that we can we can all be in the meeting? Okay? Because I'm telling you, very seldom, and I mean probably 10% of the time, if there is more than one person involved, if they're married, um, if they have a partner, whatever the case may be, if there's more than one person involved and I've only got one person on the call, maybe 10% of the time I'm going to get that sale. Um, I may get the sale eventually, but I'm very seldom going to get the sale with just that either on that call or with just one call. And the reason is this. I guarantee we'll get to the end and they're going to say, even after they've told you, I make the decisions. If I decide to do it, they'll be fine with it. At the end, when you go to try and, because uh, here's the way I would close that. If you were to actually set this meeting up, even though only one person was there. Now, I know that Raphael talked with you and we're making sure that we could get everybody on the call today. And you said that you were the decision maker so that you're the only one we needed to speak to. So looking forward, all I need to do now is get you pre-approved, which is going to take about four minutes. So what's your, let me ask you, what's your social security number? And they're going to say, well, I actually need to talk to my partner. They always do this, by the way, okay? So even when they tell you no, they don't need to, they do. They're going to use that to push off any type of closing, okay? Um, now, there's still ways for us to close it and at least get things started because at that point, I say, no, no, no problem. We're not doing anything. We're not even going to put it on an inquiry and report. All I'm doing is getting you pre-approved to make sure when you talk to your partner, you're talking to them intelligently and with something that you know you're qualified for and you're going to get and exactly what the payment is. Fair enough? Great. What's your social security? Number? I'm still going to try and move forward. And if all we're doing is doing the prequal, that's fine. At least we're moving forward. Okay. But it's so much easier when everybody's involved. Because here's the other thing. Oftentimes they'll say, well, yeah, I'll I'll re you know, I'll make sure she's really busy or he's really busy. And what I'll do is I'll just take really good notes and then I can review it with him and then we can make a decision. Um, okay, great. But it's going to take typically weeks to try and get them on the same page. And they are going to have questions that he doesn't know the answer to. They're going to get frustrated. He's going to get frustrated. You know, maybe we just, let's not even worry about this. right. Now. I don't want to think about it. We got other things to worry about. I don't know the answer. She's going to ask, you know, two or three, four questions. They it doesn't know the answer to. Why? Because she wasn't on the initial call asking us questions, right? So this is why it's so important. We got to make sure everybody's on the call. All right. Look at that. I've still got a few minutes. All right. I'm going to open this up for um, questions, concerns, comments, anything. Anybody have any questions, concerns? I hope you're still there. See, all right. Anybody? Are we good? We are good. Okay, Javier, are you there? Yes, I'm right here. I went ahead and uh, in the actual chat, uh, if you can bring down your screen, right there. You go. Uh, I sent in the chat the actual link to the form that Brett is using right now, and I really do think that it's crucial. Like I said. It's a lot more complicated than it was just a few months ago, and it really was more about just bring a bill and it's a done deal. And a lot of the times, I I always said the three cells were not enough because it happened so quick. Now it, it's a thinking person's game, and there's more variables involved, and so on. It's more dry. It's a little more boring. It's a little more thorough, <clears throat> and so it is what it is. But I think at the end of the day, we really want to be in the position to be able to go ahead and serve the client, right? I actually had one person give me a call last week, not part of my team. He was part of uh, another team with Empower. 
and was telling me how he had left. And part of the reason he left was because he felt he was not doing good for the clients anymore because he had put them all in these purchases recently. And I was telling him, well, why didn't you do the leasing? And and we're not doing that many purchases. And when I asked him, are you even certified to do the leases? The answer was no. And so him and his team left. And one of the things he said is that he was having a hard time uh, dealing with knowing that he had put them into a bad product that they were going to have to hold on. And I, and, and I told him, you should feel bad. You should feel bad because, you know, if, if you feel dirty, that means you didn't do right for, by the client. Uh, we we want to make sure we minimize that by understanding that, you know, the rules have changed. So uh, any questions from anybody about anything for Rhett, uh, please, this is your chance. If not, I really do want to thank Rhett for putting everything together in the form, giving it to me to give to you and so on. And so it really does start and it ends with everybody. And that could mean everybody get, getting the information they need to succeed in this new um, era. Please disregard some of the texts uh, or the uh, chats that you saw earlier message-wise. Uh, it's just a, a unnecessary distraction. Uh, I went ahead and uh, got rid of most of them. And so, again, I just want to really focus on nothing more, nothing less than what you and I need to do to succeed in this new world. Any yeah, questions yeah, from anybody? Era. Right. I, I just want to piggyback on what Red said about try to have both parties there. Uh, Red and I was on a couple of calls, and uh, it was kind of kind of funny that uh, this gentleman said that he was making all the decisions, and it was coming down to getting the contracts. And uh, his wife stepped in and totally obliterated the deal. So uh, it's important to try to have everyone there, or yes. you could be running into problems. Thanks, Red, for the uh, discovery, man. That was awesome. Appreciate you. Perfect. Cool. Thank you so much for the feedback. Uh, for wrap it up, please. Yeah, Dean Hooley asked, did you say the lease can include batteries? The lease can include batteries, roofing, um, main panel upgrades, everything a purchase can include. Okay. So now the PPA can include the roof and the uh, main panel upgrade as well, but not the battery. But yeah, on the leasing, we can include the batteries, the roofs, all that stuff. Yeah, Rhett, I heard that you can include the roof, but it's kind of like a workaround because they say officially we not supposed to do it, but there is a way to do it. Yeah, we just um, it, it's uh, they've 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 actually changed that now, but Did yeah, that, not a problem including the roof. I've done many roofs um, with leasing. Right. Now, let me preface that. I'm sorry. Let me preface that. Um, if you're doing an eight panel system it may be tough to do the roof you've got to remember that the roof part of the tr the project has to be less than about 50 percent of the total so whatever the roof is going to cost if the roof's going to cost 15 grand, your solar panels better be at about 18 to 20 okay because otherwise your cost per watt is going to be too high to get approved on the lease okay uh, we got uh, Raphael and uh, Denise with yeah. the raise, raise their hand. So please go ahead and uh, yeah. so please. Yeah, I just had a question. Has anybody uh, heard if, there, if Sonova is going to extend that free battery on their leases past July? I have not heard anything about that yet. Barry, you're 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 very uh, um, active on our our Facebook channels. You haven't heard anything about that yet either, right? I have not. No. Yeah, I I kind of doubt it to be honest with you. Um, and I hope they do technically, just so you know, that's a, um, it, it, it just means that on the proposal, it's showing a zero battery cost. Um, it technically still gets charged in there. And, and that's a question. That's a conversation we can have at a different time, but at the yeah. end of the day, it won't hurt you if it goes away. I, I can show you how to sell around that. Okay. Okay. Good. Denise, did you have a question? Yes. Um, Javier mentioned regarding real estate agents offering them a 50 50, giving them 50%. Can you do that if you're not tier three, if you're not doing the, if you're not selling it as a tier three? You can do it as a tier two. If you're the seller, you can you can do anything you want as the seller. If you are if you need to have a tier three with you, then no. Okay. 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 Got it. But if you're Thank a tier you. two yourself and selling on your own, you can do whatever you want. Right. Okay. It's 
the great thing about our our solar business and our commissions that we get is we are not governed at all by RESPA or any other government, you know, regulatory agents on how we can use our money. You know, with loans and real estate, we are we are very limited in regards to what we can do, either with referral fees or referral gifts or anything like that. Um, but with our solar commissions, if I want to pay somebody 50%, if I want to pay somebody 99%, I could do that. I, wouldn't of course but <laughs> got it thank you and along those lines what i did is i went ahead and typed into the actual chat a website called solarforrealtors.com solarforrealtors.com that's where you can send potential realtor recruits there's no way for them to contact me or anybody else so it's your job to follow up with them because there's nowhere for them to go after that they're just there to watch the video and then, of course, now I have a personal website, different domain I'm not going to give, that does have a contact form. Once they put it in there, boom, they go into my funnel and they immediately start to learn how to get the 50-50 or whatever the hell you're going to do with it. But the point is that I sent you guys the same recruiting website. I use, uh, it's just, this one has no way for them to contact me. No name, no phone number, no email address. So your job, if you send it to somebody, call them back and say, hey, I can check, uh, get a chance to watch the video. What were your thoughts? It has a really nice, what's called, image a social image attached to it what that means is that if you get the link and you paste it in the text message when you send it to them a preview image shows up and it looks really professional really good as well all right guys well we got to get going any questions last minute go ahead and just submit yourself real quick before we wrap it up if not i have yeah. one can you repeat the um you were saying about the panels about the 18 panels 18 to 20 panels for the roof Oh, I, I know no, that. I know that. Um, I thought that we the minimum is eight panels. Period. No, what I said is, if you're doing a very small system like eight panels, okay, you may have a problem including the roof. Got it. Simply because you're you're, oftentimes the roof costs are going to be you can the roof the roof quote can never be more than what you were having to pay for the panels. Okay, got it. Okay. Because okay. if it is, you're you're not going to match, and your your cost per watt is going to be too high for the, it to get approved. Raphael had his hand up. Do you still have a question, Raphael? Oh no, we answered it. Thank you guys. All right. Uh, last thing, I do want to let everybody know. We'll text you to let you know whether or not we're going to have a webinar next Saturday. We do have what are called the uh, school symposium taking place. It's a live event in the city of LA. It's sold out. Um, so we might not have the webinar, but either way, you'll get a text or email during the week to let you know as well. All right. All right. It was so nice seeing and hearing from all of you. Uh, we haven't done this in a while, and we will be in touch from time to time. Thank you so much, everybody. Rhett, thank you, sir, so much for your knowledge, your expertise, and your time. Hey, last question. Where would the recording be found? <laughs> uh, okay. Solar on YouTube.com. Solar on YouTube.com is our YouTube channel. That's where we host all of our trainings. And the videos, you will find them there. So make sure it's in the chat that I sent earlier. Solar on YouTube.com. Subscribe to the channel, like the videos, and everything will be there. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye bye.